John Scully, former chairman and CEO of Apple, joins us now. Always a pleasure, John. Uh, I know the last time that you were here with us, you told us you had spent some time with uh, Matthew Modine, who plays you in the film. What do you think about how you were portrayed? I heard you've seen it. Uh, I did see it, Trish, last night. Um, I thought, uh, first of all, that, that uh, Ashton Kusher did a uh, very good job of capturing the uh, you know, look and feel of Steve Jobs at that age. Um, but it wasn't good enough to save the film. I think the uh, film was um, kind of pretty loose on the facts. Yeah. And uh, what really surprised me was not my portrayal, uh, but the portrayal of Steve Wozniak. I mean, here's uh, one of the great geniuses in terms of engineering in Silicon Valley, and Steve Wozniak came off as uh, kind of this uh, you know, guy who ran around doing whatever Steve Jobs wanted as a technician. And so that was sort of disappointing that the story wasn't as good as the acting that Ashton had. Mm -hmm. So you felt like Ashton Kutcher actually did capture some of the Steve Jobs that you knew? That's interesting. Uh, I did, except uh, the way the uh, story uh, went in this movie, uh, it portrayed Steve as uh, an angry, driven individual, and of course he was driven, we all know that. Uh, but it kind of missed the side of Steve that I knew when we were close friends for three years, which was he would giggle sometimes, he could be very warm, he was very passionate, obviously, we all know that. Uh, but th it didn't do much to reveal in the screenplay uh, just the full personality of, of the man who really did change our world. Well, Steve, uh, uh, you, you back in, uh, uh, rather, <laughs> that's so funny, John, I just called you Steve, right? We've all gotten in, in, in so, is our head so, uh, so far into this thing. But back in 1987, you um, co-authored a book, Odyssey from Pepsi to Apple. You, of course, uh, uh, changed uh, the way things were done at Pepsi before you went to uh, Apple. And one of the quotes, I just want to share, um, share this with the uh, viewers. Uh, a lot of people were saying that uh, you gave Steve Jobs greater power the, than he had ever had and that... Uh, in that process, you had somehow um, created a monster. Looking back, again, those were your words in 1987. Um, looking back, um, what would you say now about those uh, same words, John? Well, I would uh, probably say that, that uh, Steve showed all of the potential. The genius was always there. The vision was always there. The ability to uh, zoom out and connect the dots, the ability to zoom in and simplify. What was missing back in the 1980s with Steve Jobs? was that he hadn't uh, matured. I mean, he, he was uh, very mercurial, very erratic, uh, and uh, they used to call it back in those days the Steve Jobs reality distortion field. And I saw my relationship with Steve not as his boss, but as his partner. I was brought in to uh, keep the profits growing on the Apple II and really turn around its momentum. So we had cash to pay for the Mac. And I was there to bring in consumer marketing because that was new to Silicon Valley. I wasn't there to create computers or to invent the future. That was Steve's job. So it really was uh, a shame that we ended up uh, breaking up because um, it's not the way that I ever thought the story would turn out. I, I, I've got a, a few questions for you. One of them is, how do you think Matthew did portraying you? Well, he's a lot better looking uh, than I am, Trish, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I got, I got so, to spend some time with him in, in, in New York. Uh, what a wonderful guy he is. I mean, I feel very uh, privileged that, that someone uh, that talented was playing my part, uh, and I have maintained that friendship with him uh, since, since the movie was, was finished. He's actually out in, in Los Angeles and working on his, his own screenplay. Uh, so. Uh, he's, he's a great guy, and I think he did a nice job. That's great. Let me ask you about something that's uh, in the news these days. Carl Icahn uh, taking a big bite out of Apple there, more than a billion dollars. Uh, and he's calling John for a $150 billion buyback of the stock. What do you think of that strategy right now for Apple? Well, first of all, Carl Icahn is a very successful, very wealthy uh, activist. So you have to have respect for his ability to do this over and over again. But it's not what Apple needs. Uh, there's little evidence that stock buybacks long-term have any real impact on uh, shareholder value. And more importantly, Apple is a growth company. It's got to get back to growth. It only grew 1% in the last quarter. And I'd much rather see Apple be investing that money into uh, opportunities for creative leaps to get back in 
the uh, game, particularly over in Asia, where they need a lower priced uh, iPhone product line. Uh, so I don't think a buyback makes much sense. But I do think the Carl Icahn uh, is coming at it from a different vantage point, maybe George Soros as well, which, which is really, they're transaction guys. They're looking for the ARB to go in and put a lot of money to work. You can put a billion dollars into Apple that's so large, you know you're going to get that billion back out and hopefully then some. So this, this is a transaction strategy. It's not a growth strategy. Apple needs a growth strategy. Well, uh, one possible uh, uh, way that they can grow wearable technology. You've got a new project uh, with Apple. It's called the uh, Shine. It's one of your new ventures, uh, uh, Misfit Wearables. Why don't you uh, talk us uh, about Shine and what this might mean for Apple, John? Sure. Well, I joined uh, Silicon Valley 30 years ago at the dawn of the microprocessor. And with microprocessors, you have to do something, you know, whether it's a computer or whether it's a, a smartphone or a tablet. Um, you know, you do a search, you send an email, you uh, do a transaction. But we're now in the early days of sensors, and sensors uh, are very passive. They sit back there, they watch, they listen, and wearables are all about passive sensors. And the real story is not the devices. The real story is the big data analytics that is being able to take that data that's being captured, let's say for healthcare, and uh, being able to track people's activity of uh, helping them uh, stay fit, be better. If you're a chronic care uh, patient, you know, getting them to uh, adhere to medication, to take better care of their weight, those types of things. And then using data analytics to do predictive uh, analytics of what things they might be concerned about based upon what uh, these devices are hearing from the, from the person in the case of healthcare. So our company is called Misfit Wearables. Uh, it was actually aimed, named Misfit by my co-founder, Sonny Vu, the CEO, because the company was started on the day that Steve Jobs died. And Steve, you may recall, had a, a wonderful uh, commercial that he wrote uh, called uh, Think Different, and it was all about the misfits and, and the people who are round pegs and square holes. And so Sonny was a great admirer of Steve and said, let's call our company Misfit. Well, our first product is Shine. It's a wearable device. I actually have on one right now. Uh, it's it's uh, an activity tracker, and we'll be introducing other products along the way. We're, so we're pretty excited about the new uh, category of wearable devices. All right, we are too. We'll see uh, what those look like. John Scully, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. Thanks. All right. Sure, thanks, Trish.